Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the ways that you provide, for the ways that you call us on this journey, and for the ways that you are present in the wilderness. God, be with us now. Be in our midst. Remind us who you are and for who you call us to be. We love you and praise you. Amen. If you were here last week, you were here for the beginning of our summer camping sermon series. If you were here last week, you heard that Daniel does not really like to camp. Right? He doesn't really like to camp. And so when Daniel came back from his sermon series planning retreat, goes on these retreats twice a year to plan with other pastors in the area, and he came back and he said, all right, when we start off the summer, we're going to kick it off with a camping sermon series. I was shocked. But if you know me at all, you know that I love to camp. And I love to hike. And I love to just get away and go into the woods, even if it is just for an hour or two at a time. And so when Daniel introduced this sermon series, I was really excited. <laughs> and I said, I, like, I'll preach the whole thing if you want. Like, this is my stuff. I can talk about God in the wilderness. I can talk about God being present as we set up tents and as we hike, which is what we'll do today. And as um, next week, as we canoe and we boat, like, I get the God of the wilderness. I get the God of creation. I, this is, this is me. And so I am excited for this morning. And I, Daniel shared last week that if he is camping, he prefers what Michelle and what many others, his wife Michelle and many others have coined glamping which is like glorious camping. And it doesn't involve a tent. It involves a cabin, at least, probably with air conditioning, and with large beds, and with all of the amenities that you might need. And maybe there are lots of windows around, so you feel like you're in the woods, but you're not really in the woods. You see, for me, I prefer a tent. And actually, if I am with others, I prefer just my hammock. No need of anything above me. I will just set it up. And I prefer to sleep with the stars above and with the noise of creation echoing around. This noise that I don't often get to hear in the middle of busy D.C. where I live or even here in the suburbs of Bowie. I do prefer that there is running clean water somewhere nearby, but it can come out of a spigot for all I care. And I'm even okay with an outhouse that we all just share. Again, prefer an outhouse at least, but love to be deep in the woods and deep in creation. Sometimes for me, camping and hiking happens in a large group but more often it is just with a friend or two, or even by myself. Any time that I can get away for a short stretch, I am restored by creation. I am restored by this time of reflection. For me, as I am hiking, and if you hike, or even if you go on nature walks, whatever degree, if you climb mountains, I don't know what it is for you. But on these walks, on these hikes, I tend to find this rhythm. And it takes me a little while, right? It takes a little while to disconnect from the busyness of the day to day. It takes a little while to be comfortable with the silence that is often found in the woods. It takes a little while for me not to turn every time I hear a leaf crunch to make sure that I am safe. But as I walk, this rhythm establishes. This quiet, still, steady rhythm. 
And maybe for you, this rhythm doesn't happen in the woods, at least not on a frequent basis. But I hope and pray that there is some part of your life that is still and quiet. Some part of your life that you are able to experience God in a way that is unusual from your busy day-to-day lives. Maybe for you it is in the car as you drive from place to place and sit in the stillness and quiet of the vehicle. Or maybe your car rides are really loud and you are praying and ready for whoever is in the car to get out so that you can be on your own. Maybe this happens in the morning when you first wake up and you are just still. Or maybe the alarm clock has gone off and you have realized that you are an hour late, like I did this morning. This morning was all set for my 545 alarm clock and it went off, I'm sure of it. I don't remember it. And at 6.40, I woke up, and our 7.30 garden service was beginning at 7.30. And I live 35 minutes away. And all of a sudden, I was in panic. There was no kind of stillness to this morning. I made it here, by the way, at 7.25, and we started at 7.30. Sometimes these moments are chaotic. And sometimes they are still. And I know that hiking is not the same for each of, us, each of us, but for me, it is a chance to be still. It is a chance for me to reflect. It is a chance for me to prepare for whatever is coming next and to reflect on whatever has just happened. And the same is true of our scriptures this morning. This morning, Moses' burning bush experience happened, this moment of God's existence in a way that Moses could not ignore, this moment that stopped him, this moment that called him to take off his sandals for he was on holy ground. This burning bush experience happened and then Moses was sent with hundreds more into the wilderness. These mountaintop experiences happen in our lives. And then sometimes we are led into the wilderness, into a long journey of not always knowing where is next. And the temptation of Jesus that was read for our gospel reading is very similar. Our gospel this morning began with Jesus in the wilderness, but right before this scripture, Jesus is baptized. The waters of the Jordan are upon him, And from his baptism, God speaks and names him as Beloved. This naming of Beloved beloved prepared him for the journey that was ahead. This difficult journey where he would be without food and water and community for 40 days. Time in the wilderness, time of hiking can be restorative can allow us to reflect, but it can also be scary. As you are unsure of where the path in front of you is going. Maybe the trail markers have not shown up yet and you're questioning whether or not you are taking the right steps. Earlier this year, I went not camping, but glamping with some friends. It was not my preference, but for these friends, they needed a cabin, and I just wanted some time away with them. And so we went to Western Maryland. These friends from seminary and I spent a couple of days in the woods, but the weather was much like the weather today and rained our entire time there. And these friends from seminary and I sat and we played board games and we read books. We had time of silence in the cabin, but come day three, I was ready for an adventure. (laughs) I could not sit in that cabin any longer, and so the weather was like it was today, but I had found a trail that was not too far, and I was determined that I was going to hike it. The path 
from the website looked like it was pretty easy, that it was not a whole lot of up and down, which was good because it was wet. But this path was supposed to lead to a really gorgeous overlook. And so I got in the car and began to drive the 15 minutes to the trailhead when the road was closed. My great plans were paused. And so I pulled up the map again and I realized that if I drove a half an hour, I could go to the other side of this road and I could still get to that path. So I did it. I drove and I drove and I drove and with another detour and another detour, the journey became a little longer and all of a sudden I'd been in the car for an hour in a very small stretch of the mountain and again, the road was closed. I was not going to get to that overlook and it was too far to hike in to that trailhead to then hike in to the mountain. And so I decided to just get out of my car in this parking lot and in this path that I didn't really know where it was headed. I decided that I could no longer be in the car and I just needed to start walking. So I got out and I found a map and my friends, as some of you are probably terrified that I'm hiking alone right now. My friends knew where I was. They knew um, how far I was going to go. They knew the general vicinity and they knew when to expect me back. So trying to hike safely, but found this new trail and this new map and looked on the map and was like, all right, this trail will not get me to that overlook, but I just need to start hiking. And started along on that trail and then began to question if I was even on that trail because there were no trail markers. There were no signs. There were no colored markings on the trees. I was supposed to be on the purple trail. There were supposed to be purple markers on the trees and yet there was nothing. And I began to think about how often in life we question if we are on the right path and how we think we are going one way and the road is closed and we find ourselves on a new path. And all of a sudden, about a half a mile in, there started to be markers. There started to be purple paint on the trees. I could see not only the one there, but I could see the next two and then the next three. As the trail turned and as other trails approached, those purple markers were there and I knew the path that I was to take. Trusting the trail, trusting the steps before me. And I fully believe that every time we are in the wilderness, or as we are hiking, as we are journeying, that we are changed by the journey. We are changed each and every time that we trust God to be present in a situation. A situation that we cannot fully control, and a situation that we don't know where the path will lead or where it will end. I did not know until this week how much I was going to need the sermon that I preached to you this morning. How I was going to need these words of trusting the journey and trusting the next steps before myself. This past week, I spent um, a couple of days at annual conference, which is the local gathering of United Methodists. Um, and while I was attending annual conference in the Peninsula Delaware region, because that is where my membership still is, Daniel was attending the annual conference here in Baltimore, Washington. And at this annual conference, lots of decisions about who we are as a denomination are made, who we are on a local level. And every four years, there's a global gathering to discuss our rules as United Methodists, to discuss the ways that we do things as United Methodists. And so was preparing to be at annual conference the last few days 
And God began to speak in a way that I could no longer ignore. Some of you know this, but some of you do not, that I have been preparing for licensing as a local pastor here at St. Matthew's. What this means is it is a step towards becoming fully ordained as clergy. I would not have full sacramental authority in any United Methodist Church, but I would, ha I would be able to do the sacraments here on my own. It is like the annual conference recognizing um, a step along the journey. And I was really excited for this moment. It has been a joy, as many of you have called me pastor for the last year or so. As many of you have begun to use that title for me long before I was comfortable using it for myself. This title that I wasn't comfortable with because I have not been officially licensed by the church or I have not been officially ordained by the denomination and yet you have seen me as your pastor. And I am so grateful for the ways that I am able to lead in ministry here before being ordained. So I was excited to take this step of licensing for the annual conference to recognize me in this role and for to be able to do the sacraments on my own. But a challenging piece of who we currently are as a denomination is that not everyone is equal in taking those clergy vows. For individuals who identify as lesbian or gay, transgender, bisexual, queer, any other sexual orientation than heterosexual, they are not allowed to take clergy vows and be in open relationships. We as St. Matthews are affirming of all people and believe that all are created in the image of God and celebrate the wide diversity of creation. You have named that as part of who you are as a congregation. But as a denomination, as the entire global United Methodist Church, we are far from there. And there's debate going on right now, and there will be a special global meeting in February of 2019 to change these laws and to figure out a way where we can go forward together. But I realized in the last week or so that I could no longer ignore God's call to stand with my friends and with my colleagues and with my siblings in Christ who are not allowed to take ordination vows, who are not allowed and who are seen as less than because of who they love. And so this past week, I found myself on a trail that I was not expecting to be on. As I have asked to hit pause in this process towards ordination, as I have committed to remaining as laity to not take clergy vows until our book of discipline, until our rule book changes. I celebrate that we as a church are affirming, but I also stand with those who have been excluded. We are changed by our encounters with God, whether they're in the known spaces, the trails that we were expecting to be on, or the known spaces of our day-to-day -day lives, or whether they are in the moments when we feel like we are hiking through the woods, deep in the wilderness. And we are changed and we are shaped as we celebrate that God has called us beloved from the very beginning, and that God calls us beloved today. I give thanks that we get to continue to be on this journey together. And that this day, wherever you are on the journey, whether you are deep in the wilderness, whether you are down in the valley or high on the mountaintop, that you would know that you are God's beloved. That God never leaves us on this journey alone. I give thanks that I get to be on this journey with each of you that I get to continue in my role here as pastor, that I get to continue to help Daniel 
to preside with Daniel in the sacraments, to assist until I can do it on my own, until my friends can do it on their own. And today I give thanks that you all continue to stand with me. And so I invite you to embrace the hike wherever you are and to continue to look for God because I can tell you that I have been so surprised and yet so grateful for the presence of God in the last week and in the weeks leading up to this, discern this discernment. I give thanks that God is present and that God continues to work in the most surprising ways. As I was preparing for annual conference, this poem came across my desk. It was sent by a friend who knew the struggle and the discernment that I was wrestling with. And it is a prayer that I share with you now. It is written by Jan Richardson. And I can tell you after ordering her book of poems that you will be hearing a lot of Jan Richardson in the next year. She writes beautiful reflections for different times of the liturgical year. And this one was written for Lent which in the middle of the wilderness and in the middle of the journey seemed fitting. Hear this poem, it is titled, Beloved is Where You Begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you, do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find that it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will, be, will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of the sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be help. I can tell you that on this way, there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us, bearing comfort and strength that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with a curious insistence, whisper our name. Beloved, beloved, beloved. Amen. <laughs>